Uh, on dot point one, um, I believe the, Russell, the Southern Russell Longs Conservation Park and more importantly the wetlands should be preserved and protected. That's my view totally. Further growth can only be a good thing for both the community and the future visitors to the islands. I would try to gain as much assistance from not only the Redland City Council but also the State Government to achieve this. Um, dot point two, sport. Well, this is one that's, uh, that's right up my alley. It's probably a bad thing to touch on after uh, we just spoke. But, um, but the State Labor Government has just recently gave the Redland City Council $750,000 for sport and recreation facilities on Russell Island. Now, I'm, I'm not sure why McLean ever received some of that, but um, obviously there are reasons, and obviously I can't be across every, every issue that's here, but I find that uh, fairly unfair. Um, but as a, as a lover of all sports, I believe sporting for our children and also for our elderly is very important. Um, I've, I've lived and, and breathed sport all my life and I love it. And I think it also, once you do that and you're involved in it, it also just doesn't make you strong in mind, it makes you strong in body. And I would facilitate and try my hardest to get as much recognition and support for the Maclay Island as Russell Island has just received this $750,000. And I do think it's a very important issue as well, sporting facility. South Russell Island uh, Creek, the conservation park that required some purchases of some land. Uh, I made comments before, I think that needs to be uh, looked at because I think 22,000 is not sustainable on, on uh, the four islands. Um, I, I think there have been a, in the past a, a lack of, develop, a lack of, uh, of green space available. I think uh, Cleveland's, for example. Uh, locally, the, where we've seen a, uh, a lack of planning. Uh, as regards to sporting, recreational and cultural initiatives, um, I think that this is tied up somewhat with health. I think that uh, we all need to be more active. Uh, there needs to be more encouragement for people to join. It creates a social adhesion, uh, which is important for all communities. And. Um, I know that the, uh, the government has uh, uh, provided some funding for infrastructure, uh, but you know, I'm, I'm tired of hearing that the government's got limited money. Uh, it's going through a massive mining boom at the moment. It could be servicing uh, the current and future uh, infrastructure needs far better than allowing 83% of the profit to go offshore. We need a fair, fairer, fairer crack of the whip here. And that would fund uh, and provide support, not only for uh, sport and recreation, but, you know, the mining boom will be over one day, they will say bye-bye, they won't see them again, and we'll be left with the wreckage. And that's going to impact on our food production as well. Uh, I'm all for sustaining for s uh, local communities, and, um, but I think it's unfair that uh, We've got one sector that's doing extremely well and we've got like unemployment levels as low as 50, unemployment levels as low as 50% I hear. But um, I don't believe the 5% figure anyway, so uh, uh, there's a lot of people who would be otherwise better engaged but they can't find the work they want so they do alternative things and you only have to work a few hours uh, a fortnight to be uh, uh, regarded as employed. But um, I, I think that by encouraging more recreation, it's tied up with the tourism and, uh, and the boating uh, and fishing. And don't, don't get it wrong, I make this announcement today. The Greens are not against recreational fishing. We, are, we do support green zones because we know they work. And the, and the work coming out of uh, the Great Barrier Reef is proving that. The fish stocks are improving if you manage them. And the only way you can manage them is with green zones. Open slammer, though. Commercial and, and indeed recreational fishers is not the way to go. The world's too overpopulated to sustain that. It's fine 100 years ago, not today. And, but I, 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 I'd like to finish by saying that, that um, I, I believe the islands do provide some opportunities for both ecotourism and recreation. And, um, I think that should be part of that overall encompassing study that I mentioned uh, earlier. All these things are related. 
And that's why you've got to have a long-term vision, but with some short-term goals. Because I think you're behind the eight ball here. You'd be badly served. If I was elected, I would do everything I can to at least try and redress that imbalance in the short term and then work with you because I think it's communities that uh, is, is where we need to get the, uh, the ideas from. At, uh, the uh, Southern Russell Island uh, Conservation uh, Park. It has got so many overlays on all of the islands from Council about conservation, linkage, habitat, uh, overlays for Africa. Those southern, that southern part of Russell Island is well protected and it's more or less a formality that council needs to go through to have those other instruments put over. But that southern part of, island, of the island is already protected. As far as sport and recreation, uh, Campbell Newman has announced uh, in the last couple of weeks a very, very targeted strategy. It's a $16 million commitment over three years to grassroots sport. And it's about helping people who are disadvantaged, who can't afford the exorbitant cost of participating in sport. And it's, uh, it's up to $150 per, per, uh, per child, and it's to get them involved in sport, because as we all know, as, as parents, uh, some of the join-up fees are, are you know, in the hundreds of dollars, and then there's the, the travel cost, there's buying the uniforms and all of the ongoing. So that's a very targeted commitment about being proactive on the health front instead of reactive because the incidence of diabetes, obesity and the health related issues that this community faces needs to be addressed right at the start and that's what Campbell has done with his uh, $16 million commitment to getting into the game.